So I think right now, more importantly than ever, we need to differentiate our practices from our other competitors. I mean, I think right now you need to be a great veterinarian, but you better be thinking of things like customer service or you're going to have a hard time. One big thing that we're really talking a lot about now is the routine monitoring of laboratory data. Serial evaluations, that's what you want to do. What do I mean by that? We want to get blood tests on animals when they're healthy. That way we can detect disease earlier on, later on in their lives. The best reference range or interval for a pet is their own reference range when they're healthy. When we get blood work, we're taking a picture, a snapshot of that, what's going on in that animal at one point in time. I want a movie. That's what I want. Not just a snapshot. Best example of that would be hematology. <laughs> hematology changes hourly. In your anemic patients, is the anemia regenerative or non-regenerative? Which brings us to the first point today that I want you to remember. I have five things you probably really need to know today. One is, every animal that's anemic, you must do an absolute reticulocyte count. Why? If you do not, you can't tell whether the anemia is regenerative or non-regenerative. Why is that such a big deal? Because when they're regenerative anemia, I think <laughs> blood loss or hemolytic. And that's the path that you want to travel diagnostically. This is where everybody makes mistakes and we need to fix this. White cells. So the first statement I'm going to say, which we totally screw up, which is bad. Quit looking at the total white blood cell count and thinking it means much. It doesn't. I almost don't care. Don't think a high white blood cell count means an animal has an infection because you're going to be wrong almost all the time. Stress leukogram is this. First of all, a minimum of four hours to occur. This isn't the mean cat, right? The wild cat you're holding down. Not a stress leukogram. Stress leukogram takes minimum of four hours. And most of our veterinary patients have been ill for days. So guess what? You're going to see it. Here's the syndrome. You're ill from another disease. Cancer, pancreatitis, IMHA. You pick the disease. Adrenal glands secrete cortisol and that creates reproducible changes in the leukogram. So here's what it does in order of appearance. Lymphopenia is the most common finding. Low lymphocytes. You're going to find that with a stress leukogram. Low eosinophils. Mature neutrophilia, not, not a left shift, which has bands, but a high neutrophil count that's made up of mature neutrophils. And that can go up into the 20,000 range. Yeah. So you can get in, when you add them all up with a stress leukogram, you can be looking at 20 to 30,000 total white blood cells. Another reason you can't say an animal with a high white count has an infection, all right? So low lymphs, low EOs, mature neutrophilia, monocytes normal to slightly increased. You won't have all those things in every stress leukogram. Sometimes you'll just have a lymphopenia. So one, one rule I always use is the animal's sick if the client thinks it's sick. That's one. If they have a stress leukogram, something is wrong. It's the maintenance light. You know the light on your car that comes on? Maintenance required, right? It doesn't say what's wrong with your car, but a light comes on. That's hematology. That's the stress leukogram. Something is wrong. Can't tell you what it is. Something's not right with this animal. Use the absolute reticulocyte. This is your best test for bone marrow regeneration, the absolute reticulocyte count. Get that with every anemic patient. You'll hear me say at the end, and I'll show you a case, where you actually want it with every case, whether they're anemic or not. This is a huge test in veterinary medicine. This is why veterinarians are buying laser sight and pro sight, because of that. I would do a retic count on every animal, whether they're anemic or not. That's why. I'm going to do um, hematology on my preant. God, if you don't do hematology in your preant, you're going to make some horrific mistakes. These are neutrophils. There's more than normal. Let me show you what normal looks like. So here's normally, it's a nice cloud, an oval cloud that's separated nicely from the lymphocytes, and it sits right here. 
So I think there's more of them. So I think there's more neutrophils than a normal dog. The other thing that's really important though is the pattern. Can everybody see that normally it's oval and here we have what I've termed shark, a shark fin. It's like a triangle. See it right here? I call it the shark fin. When you see a shark fin, you know what that means? That means you have a left shift. Those are immature neutrophils. Why is that so big? That's your six part differential. So I, I'm an in-clinic tester. In my hospital, I do all hematology, chemistry, electrolytes, UA, in-clinic. That's what I do. So what am I sending out? Histopath and phenobarb and PCR. I call it the Metzger activity score. So what is that? You know the um, body condition score? I have one for activity and here's exactly what I say. Hey guys, a scale of one to 10. If 10 is what Misty is normally, where's she at? You'll be shocked and it'll change what you're doing. Because they'll say she's like a two. So I want to remember who I'm working on. I want everyone to be Jacqueline Smith. And I want clients to think they're the only ones I've seen today.